thanks Mike and thanks Frank. Um, I suppose, as Mike alluded to earlier, there is something of a mystery about what's all this and I think Frank has done a good job of clearing up the first set of mysteries of who are the IPCC and what's that. I'll do my best to clear up the mysteries of who am I and who do we want you to be. My presentation, what it lacks in animation that we had in Frank's, it makes up for in plagiarism with my first slide, <laughs> with, which you may have seen in Frank's presentation. Um, I think we've covered the first five or six lines of that, but the most important line I want to talk about is the bottom line, the authors, contributors, and reviewers. And those are the people who number in their hundreds, and they are the people who provide the, the meat of the report that is then considered by the IPCC officials. And then the focal point, so that's who am I. Every country, every member country has a focal point. They prepare and update the list of national experts. They take, have a role in coordinating the government reviews mentioned by Frank. They are appointed through state academic channels, and there are also observer organizations who have focal points too. And they submit, most importantly, the nominations for the experts. So the experts, you have a range of experts who feed into that bottom line of where the work of the IPCC reports come from. You have coordinating lead authors, lead authors, contributing authors, review editors, and experts may also enlist further experts as contributing authors if needed. Everybody who gets selected, the intention would be that the panel will reflect a range of scientific, technical, and socioeconomic views and expertise. It will have a geographic representation, a spread. It will include a mixture of experts with and without previous experience in the IPCC, and they also look to have a gender balance. So the first set of authors, the lead authors, they're responsible for the production of designated sections of a report. Their, their job is to, take, to provide a synthesis of the material that's drawn down from the available literature. They'll take account of expert and government comments, and they'll ensure that the text of the report is scientifically, technically, and socioeconomically sound, and that it represents the contributions of the experts. They'll also record the views which can't be reconciled with the consensus view, and as Frank said, they form part of the report too. They'll convene meetings with the contributing authors, and they'll suggest relevant workshops or expert meetings to the working group or the Tax Force Bureau co-chairs. Then coordinating lead authors, which is actually a bigger job than lead authors, they will coordinate major sections of an IPCC report. They are lead authors and they have additional responsibility. Their job is to ensure that the sections of the report are of a high standard, that they're collated and they're delivered to the co-chairs. They will ensure cross-cutting and scientific and technical issues will be addressed in a complete and a coherent manner. Then contributing authors. Contributing authors are there to prepare technical information to be, to be assimilated by the lead authors into the sections of an IPCC report. There's a wide range of contributors, and this is key to ensuring that the work of the IPCC reflects the, the broad spectrum of scientific expertise. They will refer to peer-reviewed and international available, internationally available literature as their work, and they're there to emerge, and edit, and amend contributing material as appropriate. Expert reviewers will comment on the accuracy and completeness of the content and the balance of the drafts in the report. They will represent their own knowledge and expertise. And review editors. Review editors will assist in identifying reviewers for expert review processes. They'll ensure the comments are afforded appropriate consideration. They will advise the lead authors on any contentious issues. And they'll manage the handling of the differences of opinions. Generally, each chapter of an IPCC report will have two to four review editors. So at present, as Frank alluded to, there's two special reports that are currently in the pipeline, and we've been asked to provide nominations for the special report on the oceans and the cryosphere, and on the special report on climate change and land. There will be four lead author meetings from this year through to 2019, and if we're going to submit nominations, we need to do so by the 17th of May for both of these reports. Nominees should provide details of their affiliation, their degrees, their languages, what sector they're employed in, previous IPCC experience, what expertise they have, if they have any peer-reviewed or other relevant publications, and a summary CV. And they should provide that to me. There's also, just to add, that the IPCC chair has prepared a vision paper to be presented at the, uh, the Assessment Report 6 scoping meeting in May, and we've been asked to provide any input on that by the 14th of April. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about, send me an email and I'll tell you, but we need to respond by Friday. So. Time is short on that. Okay, thanks everybody. <laughs>